All right, here is free response four and the 2023 AP exam. And like I remind you guys, I don't have the answers. So these are my best guess at solutions. I will put any corrections or clarifications in the comments or the description below. So we have a medical researcher completed a study comparing omega-3 fatty acids supplement a placebo in the treatment of irritability patients with certain medical conditions. 19 patients with a medical condition volunteered to participate in the study. The study was conducting using the following stable. Schedule. Each patient took a randomly sent treatment, omega-3, or placebo. The patients did not take either this. as an issue reduced possibility of carryover effect from the assigned treatment taken during week one. Each patient took the treatment that they did not take during week one. So we we took it, we gave it to them, and then we swapped it. Give it they they swapped it, like um, for the second one. Um irritability was given by zero to ten. So placebo, omega-3 difference. So this is going to be like kind of a matched pairs probably because you're kind of doing the same person and comparing their differences here. Um, so this looks like a matched pairs experiment from my initial read on this because they're, you know, like you're getting two sets of results, but the difference is all that really matters because it's the same person. Irritability score, placebo, and then the differences here. Okay, fair enough. The researchers claim that the omega-3 supplement will decrease the mean irritability score of all patients with medical conditions similar to volunteers. Is there convincing statistical evidence to support the researchers' claim at significant levels of alpha equals 0 0.05? Compel the appropriate inference procedure to support your answer. Okay, so that's all we're doing here is a matched pairs test here. Now, how are we going to look at this? We have mean standard deviations. You think you have all of this data, but really we're going to be focusing on the differences here. Okay, so let's set up our um, kind of our, you know, what are what are we looking for here? Now, are we doing a um, the mean irritability score? So this is sample means. It is not a proportion. It's a sample means. It's a mean irritability score. So it's some kind of number. It's not a percentage or anything like that. So let's say, um, let's look at, Let's see, they would decrease the mean irritability score. Let's say, let's say, um, we'll say um, mu D is the difference in the scores, difference, which is really difference, which is equal to the placebo value, which is the, um, I don't know, like the, <clears throat> the, the mu placebo, no, not mu placebo, the placebo minus the, um, well, actually, what did they do in the difference? They did placebo minus omega-3. Okay, placebo minus omega-3. Okay, and so our null and alternative hypothesis is whether or not this difference was, let's assume that there is no difference, and we want to prove whether or not it will decrease it. That means we want the difference, do we want it to be positive or negative? I think we want it to be, um, we want the placebo irrit irritability to be higher, so we want it to be positive, right? Because I would like this number, this omega-3 number, to be smaller. They reduce the irritability by using this medicine here. Okay, so I want the difference to be greater than zero here. So this is a matched pairs t-test. Okay, so first thing, we want to establish conditions. All right, so first conditions are going to be for matched pairs is, let's say, it's random samples. <clears throat> and people were randomly assigned where they each randomly took an assigned treatment uh, random or actually randomly assigned treatment. So I say random samples and uh, and assigned treatment and randomly assigned treatment. Usually just random samples is sufficient, but I want to throw that in there because it's kind of like an uh, experiment too. Um, the other is the independence. Remember for independence, uh, we want to assume that the sample size n is less than or equal to 10% of the population. And in this statement, we'd say like, well, there is probably, because what um, we're, we're trying to do it for all patients um, with a certain medical condition. So we'll say there are probably more than 19, 190 people with this medical condition. Let's assume it's not super rare <clears throat> with a certain medical condition. Because n, and why am I doing that? Like n is equal to 19. So 10% of of the population would be like, you know, as long as it's bigger than 190 people in the population, then we're probably good. Okay. And then the third I call the is the norm, normal condition. Now for t-tests, the normal condition has to do with whether or not 
A, you know the population is uh, normally distributed, which we do not know in this case. B, your sample size is greater than 30, which is we do not know in this case. Or C, that the, um, that the distribution does not appear to have any significant skew. Now, we want to look at the mean differences, and that's why we're going to look at this. We will say that this looks, <clears throat> the box plot indicates that it's fairly symmetric with this maybe a slight left skew, but no significant skew. Okay, so it's, I would say <clears throat> the samples, sample differences are mostly symmetric, mostly, <clears throat> you know, have little skew, are, you know, have a slight amount of skew. You just want to say no significant skew. Okay, this is qualitative, but if they had a significant amount of skew, then we, we, we couldn't do it, okay? So that is sufficient. So those are the three conditions. <clears throat> We've stated the null and the alternative hypothesis. We have explained the test. So now we are going to run, so now you're gonna run your matched pairs t's test on the differences. And at this point, <clears throat> what I like to do is I just like to bust out the calculator and we are going to do stat tests. We are going to do a, now remember it's a matched pairs. Even though we've got two sets of data, we're really only operating on the one set of data, right? So it's really just the t-test itself. Uh, yeah, just a t test. So um, we're doing the stats, not the data. We don't actually have the data. So what is on the null hypothesis? It's that it's zero. What is the sample mean? The sample mean is 1.789. <clears throat> the standard deviation is 2.485. And n is 19. And we care about doing greater than zero. That's what we said, greater than, right? <clears throat> So then we'll calculate, and um, we'll say the. T and I like to write. Oops, let me put up, keep it up on the screen so you guys can <coughs> can write it down. The t the t value is three point one three eight, and the probability value is zero point zero zero two eight four two. Okay, and so because <coughs> the p value. Now, what's the uh, alpha is less than alpha equal to zero point zero five. We can conclude <coughs> that the omega omega three supplement, or we can conclude that there is enough evidence. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. There's enough evidence that the omega three supplement did reduce the uh, <clears throat> mean irritability score. So you just want to make a conclusion. You don't want to just, don't just say reject the null. Be in context, has to be in context. So what does that mean to reject the null? It means we think that it did reduce, <coughs> de it did decrease the mean irritability score. And you want to say there's enough evidence to do that. You don't want to say like you know for sure or anything like that. You just say there's enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And that completes any other parts? Nope, that's it.